This will be so easy to go through without mispronouncing everything and stuttering over all my words. Putting <sighs> a um, speaker says, ah, uh, exactly. It'll be fine. Hi, and welcome to my channel. My name is Rosica, and this is The Midnight Reader. Today, it is gloomy and rainy, and I'm going to be wrapping up all the books that I read in 2021. The very first booktube-related video I ever watched was by Ruby Granger. It was her wrap-ups of all the books she'd read at the end of every year. I'm gonna do something similar. I'm just gonna read through all the books that I read. I'm not gonna be able to talk about all of them because then we would be here for a million years. <laughs> then at the end, I'm gonna put in some reading statistics and stuff like that. There's probably gonna to be a costume change midway through the video and for the back half because I'm filming this in early December and I want credit for any books I read in the last like couple weeks of December. I kind of have to get started on it now because I have to put in graphics for all the books. Please excuse the wardrobe and probably lighting change. So I have read, insert here, 106 books this year, which exceeded my reading goal of 100 books. I'm just gonna roll through them in the order that I read them. All right, here we go. First book, I'm Still Here, Black Dignity in a World Made for Whiteness by Austin Channing Brown. The Rhythm of War, The Stormlight Archive, book number four by Brandon Sanderson, fabulous series. Dear Girls, Intimate Tales, Untold Secrets, and Advice for Living Your Best Life by Ali Wong, friggin' hilarious. The Orca Thief by Susan Orlean, hated that book. The Rhythmatist by Brandon Sanderson, this is my favorite Sanderson, I'll die on this hill later. Convenience Store Woman by Sayaki Murata with Ginny Tapley Takamori as translator. Mitosis from The Reckoners number 1.5 by Brandon Sanderson. Be Tree by Emily Henry, probably my favorite romance that I've ever read. Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Eng. Lab Girl by Hope Yarin. Gathering Moss, A Natural and Cultural History of Mosses by Robin Wall Kimmerer. Really enjoyed that book. It made me stare at moss a lot. <laughs> Tempest and Slaughter, The New Mare Chronicles book one by Tamora Pierce. A Million Junes by Emily Henry, which is a young adult Romeo and Juliet retelling with some magical realism. And then I reread a bunch of young adult fantasy series that I loved when I was younger. Wild Magic from the Immortal series, number one by Tamora Pierce. Divergent, book one by Veronica Roth. Wolf Speaker from the Immortal series, number two by Tamora Pierce. The Knife of Never Letting Go from the Chaos Walking series, number one by Patrick Ness. Really liked the first book in that series. Series. liked them less as they went on. I thought they had interesting concepts, but I got tired of the twists on twists. I just wanted it to end. Like, I thought they had too many endings. Emperor Mage from the Mortal Series number three by Tamora Pierce. Run to the Finish, the Everyday Runner's Guide to Avoiding Injury, Ignoring the Clock, and Loving the Run by Amanda Brooks. This is my favorite sports book that I read this year. A Long Way Home by Saru Brierly with Larry Buttros and Vickers Adam. The Ask and the Answer from the Chaos Walking Series number two by Patrick Ness. Ready Player Two Two by Ernest Klein, The Realms of the Gods from the Immortal series number four by Tamora Pierce. <laughs> How Not to Hate Your Husband After Having Kids by Jan C. Dunn. Please don't read into the title. <laughs> I heard about it on a podcast. It was thoroughly okay. The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton. I got a little lost in the audiobook a couple of times, but I still gave that five stars. Monsters of Men from the Chaos Walking series, number three by Patrick Ness. My least favorite book this year, Let's Explore Diabetes with Owls by David Sedaris. His humor's probably just not for me. I found this book kind of offensive and racist in parts and I just didn't, it wasn't my thing. Women and Other Monsters, Building a New Mythology by Jess Zimmerman. It's kind of like a feminist memoir mixed with Greek mythology. That was a cool read. Eating Animals by Jonathan Safran Foer. This will make you want to be a vegan or feel really icky about eating meat. Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rowell. That was the first Rainbow Rowell I'd ever read. Also kind of a Romeo and Juliet retelling, I think. My Life in France by Julia Child and Alex Prudhomme. The Anthropocene Reviewed by John Green, my favorite book I read this year. I love this book. I would recommend this to pretty much everyone. The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. Erotic Stories for Punjabi Widows by Bali Kaur Jaswell. Confessions of an Unlikely Runner, A Guide to Racing and Obstacle Courses for the Averagely Fit and Halfway Dedicated by Dana L. Ayers. The Unlikely Adventures of the Sure Girl Sisters by Bali Kaur Jaswell. If you like travel and family stories, this is a fantastic read. The Death of Mrs. 
Mrs. Westway by Ruth Ware, one of my favorite mystery thrillers of the year. The Hill We Climb, an inaugural poem for the country by Amanda Gorman. This was the poet who read at Biden's inauguration in the US and she's fantastic. I did read this and it was on Goodreads, so I counted it. Yes, No, Maybe So by Becky Albertalli with Aisha Saeed. Hood Feminism, Notes from the Women That a Movement Forgot by Mickey Kendall very good read as well. Orchards by Holly Thompson. The House in the Cerulean Sea by T.J. Klune. Love that book. Memorial by Brian Washington. The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime by Mark Haddon. Totally unique. The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I did enjoy that book a lot. That was really good. Separation Anxiety by Laura Zygman. Summer of Salt by Katrina Leno. One by One by Ruth Ware. Probably my favorite mystery thriller of the year. It's a locked in book set in a ski shop. LA. It's so good. <laughs> Definitely felt like it had been inspired by Agatha Christie. Recursion by Blake Crouch. Great science fiction time travel book. Circe by Madeline Miller. Man, this was just a run of winners. Loved Circe. Fantastic. If you like Greek myths at all, you'll probably enjoy it. The English Wife by Lauren Willig. It's a nice historical mystery. Green Glass House by Kate Milford. The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. The Woman in Cabin 10 by Ruth Ware. Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. I I didn't like this one, I think, as much as other people on booktube did. I did enjoy having lived in the area that the book is set in. Uh, it was kind of fun to be like, oh, they're performing like human sacrifices and stuff by that place that I go get burgers in. They're performing magical rites and stuff where I go jogging. So that was kind of fun. Never World Wake by Marishi Pessel, The Bookish Life of Nina Hill by Abby Wexman. This is a contemporary romance. It might be everything that I want in a book. Beowulf by Unknown, translated by Burton Raffle. I read this while I was prepping for a colonoscopy, proving that you can read classics while you're firmly chained to a toilet. The things we tell the internet. People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. I liked it, but not as much as I liked Beach Read. My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. The House on Mango Street by Sandra Cisneros. That should be required reading, I feel like, in high school. I would have preferred to read this over a lot of my other required reads. Mythos, The Greek Myths Retold by Stephen Fry. Love love this book. Also probably my favorite audiobook of the year because Stephen Fry is a hysterical narrator. The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. The Year of Less, How I Stopped Shopping, Gave Away My Belongings, and Discovered Life is Worth More Than Anything You Can Buy in a Store by Kate Flanders. This is the book that inspired my year-long buying ban, which I'll make a video about later. Love Lettering by Kate Claiborne. The Heart Principle from the Kiss Quotin series number three by Helen Huang. Spark Joy, an illustrated masterclass on the art of organizing and up by Marie Kondo. Crying in H Mart by Michelle Zauner. This is a memoir and man is it a powerful book about grief and loss and complex mother-daughter relationships. Completely devastating but a very good read. Shades of Grey by Jasper Fjord. This was probably the weirdest book I read this year and I don't know how to explain it. This is a sci-fi fiction fantasy kind of set in the world of the Wizard of Oz but mostly not. The ability to see color is something that's highly valued in this fiction society and so are spoons and I don't know how to describe it better than that. I thought it was really weird when I read it but I also can't stop thinking about it. <laughs> the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. Was really excited to read this and I realized after reading it that I don't like body horror. <laughs> the Honey Don't List by Christina Lauren. Bringing Up Bebe, One American Mother Discovers the Wisdom of French Parenting by Pamela Druckerman with Abby Creighton. The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley. Eat a Peach by David Chang and Gabe Ula. Kitchen Confidential, Adventures in the Culinary Underbelly by Anthony Bourdain. Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney. Coraline by Neil Gaiman. Arsenic and Adobo, Atita Rosie's Kitchen Mystery by Mia P. Manan Sala. It's it's an adorable cozy mystery. Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating by Christina Lauren. Probably my favorite Christina Lauren that I've ever read. The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner. Over the Top, A Raw Journey to Self-Love by Jonathan Van Ness. The Grown Up by Gillian Flynn. This was right down there on like worst books I read this year. David Sedaris still takes it. The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. I didn't really like that book either. It kind of leans into a horror too more than fantasy. That worked really well for me with Coraline, but I didn't like it in this book. 
Matilda by Ronald Dahl, one of my favorite children's books of all time. Wishful Drinking by Carrie Fisher. Pumpkin Heads by Rainbow Rowell with Faith Erin Hicks as illustrator, one of my favorite graphic novels that I've ever read, closely followed by my other favorite graphic novel I've ever read, which was Sheets by Brenna Thumler. The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I would describe it way more as like a YA romance than a YA mystery, and I thought it was thoroughly okay. The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. Loved that book. Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell, which is my favorite Rainbow Rowell that I've read so far. Major throwbacks to college. Gut, the inside story of our body's most underrated organ by Julia Enders, illustrated by Jill Enders. What I talk about when I talk about running by Haruki Murakami with Philip Gabriel as translator. Future home of the living God by Luis Erdrich. One of the most original dystopia ideas I've ever read. Tiny Beautiful Things, Advice on Love and Life from Dear Sugar by Cheryl Strayed. Best book with the ugliest cover. Still Life, a Chief Inspector Armand Gamache novel, number one by Louise Penny. Cozy Small Town Mystery. The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. I wish I had read this earlier. Anna Holidays by Christina Lauren. Under the Whispering Door by TJ Klune. I thought it was fantastic. I do think the blurb on the back is a little misleading, but if you want a comforting book about death in the afterlife, that's your book. Christmas in Alaska, an anthology by Debbie Macabre. I didn't rate this very highly, but I did give it to my grandmother, so we'll see what she thinks. Hercule Poirot's Christmas by Agatha Christie. Love all Agatha Christie. I would love to read all of them and I have a long way to go. A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass. A very horny book about fairies and I'm into it. A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. Probably one of my favorite classics I've ever read. There's No Such Thing as Bad Weather, A Scandinavian Mom's Secrets for Raising Healthy, Resilient, and Confident Kids by Linda McGurk. Unwell Women by Eleanor Cleghorn. Sadie by Courtney Summers, which was a fantastic thriller audiobook and so, so good. And finishing 2021 with Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. So I wanted some statistics on the books that I read this year. And I know that Storygraph actually does a fair amount of stats, but I just started using them in the last few months. So a lot of the books that I imported from my Goodreads were classified incorrectly and I have too many to care. Plus there were some stats that I wanted which just flat out don't exist on Storygraph. So I made my own friggin spreadsheet and I made my own graphs and it was a lot of work and it took a lot of time and my husband had to help me with coding things. So I accept no criticism on the non-aesthetic beauty of the graphs. <laughs> So first I thought it would be interesting to look at some of the statistics on the authors of the books that I read. Even though I read 106 books this year, you'll notice that there are more authors listed because quite a few of the books that I read this year had multiple authors. I'm looking at you, Christina Lauren. I wanted to know how many books I read this year were by male versus female authors. And as you can see, 2021 was the year of the ladies with a whopping 70% of the books that I read had female authors, 29 for men. And then there is a 1% sliver of unknown because technically Beowulf is by an unknown author. Next, over the past few years, I've kind of made a conscious effort to try to diversify my reading and read more books by authors who are people of color. So for the year 2021, of the 106 books I read this year, 82% were by white authors and 18% were by POC authors. I was initially sort of confused by this graphic because I was pretty sure that I had increased the amount of books that I had read by non-white authors. And then I remembered that math is a thing. And I had to remember math was a thing because I wasn't that good at math. <laughs> so this is a graph of my reading in the year 2020 in which I only read 60 books and 15 of them were by authors of color. So I came out with 25% of my authors being people of color and 75 being white authors. This year I read 106 books and increased the number of authors that were non-white from 15 to 19. But because <laughs> I read so many more books by white authors, it actually decreased my percentage to 18. That was kind of annoying and I'm going to have to work on that next year. <laughs> I thought it might be interesting to look at where I get my books from, so where my books are sourced. So as you can see, 86% of them are from the library. 11% were gifts or purchased, and 3% were from Audible. And the 3% should actually be in gifts or purchase because people buy me like three month subscriptions, which is a nice gift that I enjoy. Thanks friends. <laughs> but as you can see, most of them were, were from the library, which did not surprise me. 
Next, I was curious to see the medium in how I read my books. So you can see that I was pretty much dead even on audiobooks versus ebooks, with 44% being ebooks and 46% being audiobooks, and only 9% being paper books. And the 9% did not surprise me at all. I actually would have thought that number might be a little bit lower because I really just don't read many paper books. The audiobooks I think is the highest it's ever been because they're really trying to substitute a lot of podcast listening time with audiobook listening time in the past two years. So I was surprised that it was pretty much dead even. I would have maybe guessed more ebooks, but pretty much dead even. And finally, we have a pie graph that I'm actually very proud of, which is the cost of the books that I read this year. So you can see that 95%, so pleased with this, 95% of the books that I read this year were free. And then only 5% were purchased. And I'm really happy with that number. Being able to obtain books for free that were not paper books made a huge difference in my ability to read more. I'm not really expecting that number to change very much. And I'd be okay if it went up a little bit but I think I'd like to keep the amount of books that I read for free to be at least like 85% of the total books that I read. But I was really happy with this because cost of books was something that stopped me from reading voraciously for some time. So I thought I'd talk about some of my reading goals for the year of 2022. First off, I wanna bump up the percentage of my non-white authors to 25%. I, that's my goal pretty much every year, and I didn't meet it this year, which I was kind of disappointed by, but I understand why I didn't. So I'm still going to consciously try to read more diversely, but I'm also going to pick a genre that I want to read majority non-white authors in for 2022, and that's going to be romance. Because, well, I think I read a fair amount of queer stories this year. I didn't actually read very many non-white romances. And I feel like that's a genre where it's really easy to just kind of fall into straight white heterosexual reading. My goal for romance in 2022 is to read majority non-white romance authors. Next, another goal I have is to read more classics. So for 2021, my goal had been to read two classics. And I wound up reading three. Nope. It was four. I forgot A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. Yeah, I read The Bell Jar, I read Beowulf, and then I read The House on Mango Street, which I'm counting because that's a modern classic. And that was pretty okay. I think I read most of those in the back quarter of 2021. So it wasn't actually that hard to do. And I think my goal for 2022 is gonna be to read four to six classics in a year, which would be like one every two to three months, which I think is is doable. Classics can be a little difficult for me. Like if they're, if they're really dry or kind of hard to get through, I can definitely like start reading slumps for me or I just kind of grow steadily more allergic to reading the book. <laughs> to make it a little more fun, I'm going to create a little way to assign classic reading to myself, which you'll see in a future video, to add a little more variety so it feels a little less like homework. Probably the goal, which is like the least great for running a book to, but I'm gonna do it anyway, is that I am going to be decreasing the number of books that I read in a year. I'm not shooting for 100 books next year. I think it was really fun to do, and I read a lot of cool things, but it's, it's not my happy number. Definitely a number where I feel more pressure to read books that I would rather not. Occasionally, like, I just read a book because it's short or whatever. More like buffet reading. Like, you just take what's there because it's available. And I like to put a little more thought into the things that I read. I did wind up reading a lot of really fun things. So I had more favorite books this year than I did in the previous year when I read 60 books. However, I don't think that's, like the best reading number for me. So I'm not actually going to select a number for a reading goal. I just know that my happy place is somewhere in the 50 to 80 book range. So that's kind of what I'm gonna shoot for. We're gonna, we're gonna shoot a little lower. So this was my year in books for 2021. I hope you enjoyed it. These were the sort of videos that got me into watching booktube and I wanted to make my own. I will link Ruby Granger and her yearly wrap ups down below. She was the first booktuber I think I ever saw and then I dived into the world of booktube and here we are. <laughs> but yes, I hope you also had a good reading year. Let me know if there was anything on my reading list that you thought was interesting. It's a wide and eclectic range that I read. If you like my content, please like and subscribe and I will see you in 2022. Thank you.